Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar titled Advance Your High Throughput Workflow with Sample Preparation and Automation. This webinar is part of the Coronavirus Virtual Event Series, the seventh in the series. I'm Susie Valdez of LabRoots and I will be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots and sponsored by Thermo Fisher Scientific. For more information about Thermo Fisher Scientific, please go to thermofisher.com. So let's get started. Before we begin, I want to remind everyone that this event is interactive and we encourage you to first participate by communicating with other attendees using our new live chat feature during the presentation. You can find that live chat located on the right of your screen. You can also participate and submit as many questions as you want during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the ask a question box and click send. If you have any trouble seeing or hearing this presentation, just click on the Help Desk button located at the bottom of your screen within the navigation bar or from the lobby. I now introduce you to today's speaker. First, Hannah Saunders, a manager at the Clinical Sample Preparation R&D at Thermo Fisher Scientific. Joining Hannah will be Dr. Fan Liu, a staff engineer in the systems design at Thermo Fisher Scientific. And finally, Lily Manley, a scientist level three clinical sample preparation R&D at Thermo Fisher Scientific. For a complete biography of our speakers, please visit the biography tab at the left of your screen. Welcome to all three of you. You may now begin your presentation. Hi, thank you so much for joining our webinar where we'll be discussing accelerated high throughput workflows advanced with automation. My name is Lily Manley. I'm a scientist three for Thermo Fisher Scientific with the clinical sample preparation R&D team. In today's webinar, we'll have Hannah Saunders and Fan Liu discussing how we can accelerate high throughput workflows advanced in automation. Through today's agenda, we'll be discussing first sample collection needs applied to SARS-CoV-2. We'll then have Hannah Saunders discuss saliva and high throughput workflows, followed by automation for sample preparation. We'll then fo be following with a topic discussion around advancements for sample transfer. And at the end, we'll open up the floor for a question and answer session. Sample collection for surveillance and ongoing research is absolutely critical. There's recurring testing needs for schools, governments, nursing homes, prisons, and one-time testing needs for travel, air and border control, long duration stays like cruises and hotels, and short duration events such as concerts or pre-departure air. There's a need for convenient and non-invasive sample self-collection methods that meet an overall low cost must be easy to use from sample collection to results and should be pretty fast when processing thousands of samples at one time. Currently, many of these techniques rely on suboptimal methods that may impact downstream results. Nasopharyngeal swabs, which are collected in viral transport media, can be highly invasive and can cause sneezing, a coughing reflex, and they're really not suitable for self-collection. The alternative method for collection with SARS-CoV-2 can be anterior nasal swabs, which can, which can also be stored in viral transport media or saline. This method, although less invasive, can still be moderately invasive, may cause you to need to blow your nose. It can be self-collection enabled, but it may cause bleeding. Both of these techniques require a swab stored within the tube that can cause issues for downstream processing within the lab's workflow. By moving towards saliva, we offer a non-invasive sample collection technique that can be preferred by most users, especially for re repetitive use. There's two different types of saliva with saliva collection. We offer stabilized and raw saliva collection devices for the particular needs. I'd now like to introduce Hannah Saunders, a manager with clinical sample preparation for Thermo Fisher Scientific, where she'll be discussing saliva and a high throughput workflow for viral detection.
Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Lily. Uh, as she mentioned, my name is Hannah Saunders. I'm a manager in the cl clinical sample preparation group for uh, R&D here at Thermo Fisher Scientific. And I will talk to you about our uh, saliva collection offerings in the high throughput workflows for viral detection. So for RNA extraction uh, in qPCR, to further enable saliva as a sample type, we developed the Specimax saliva collection kits. The kits are available in both raw and stabilized collection configuration. Both kits are compatible with our MagMax Viral Pathogen 2 Nucleic Acid Isolation Kit, and the viral RNA from both configurations has been tested with TACMAN SARS-CoV-2 assays that, both, that use RNASP or MS2 as an extraction control. A little bit more about the Specimax uh, saliva collection kit. This slide summarizes the defining characteristics for both versions of the kit. Um, each kit consists of an easy-to-use funnel, cap, and a tube for supervised collection. The 6 mil standard tube is compatible with many commercially available automation racks. The raw tube is suitable for use in heat inactivation protocols for viral inactivation. The stabilized configuration contains one milliliter of a stabilization solution that is capable of inactivating SARS-CoV-2. The raw device is suitable for collecting one to two mils of raw saliva, and the stabilized device uh, presents a collection volume of one milliliter. Viral nucleic acid from saliva after storage in the Specimax device was tested for both options. The stabilized device enables shipping and storage for up to seven days at room temperature. The stabilization is achieved using a non-toxic detergent solution that is compatible with disinfectants, including bleach. Uh, some other uh, methods use guanidinium-based products that can release cyanide if they're mixed with sodium hypochlorate-based cleaning solutions, such as bleach. So next, I'm going to talk a little bit about the stability of the saliva that is, that is collected with the Specimax saliva kit. The following data illustrates the stability of raw and stabilized saliva samples collected using Specimax and held at room temperature for 10 days. For both studies, the saliva donors, uh, there were four saliva donors used. The sample was spiked with inactivated SARS-CoV-2. At each time point, 200 microliters of the saliva sample was put into the reaction containing about 5,000 copies of SARS-CoV-2, and it was processed with the MagMax Viral Pathogen 2 Nucleic Acid Isolation Kit on the Kingfisher Flex. After nucleic acid isolation, qPCR was performed using TACMAN assays with about 1,000 copies going into the qPCR reaction. The kit includes three assays that target SARS-CoV-2 genes and one extraction control, which is the MS2. The graph on the left shows the data for raw saliva. The graph on the right shows the stabilized saliva. On the x-axis are three COVID genes and the MS2 bacteriophage extraction control. With each gene target, the four donors are side by side. The y-axis is showing qPCR CT values. The blue diamond is the day one stability. The orange square shows day five. The green triangle is day 10. Notice that all three time points in this graph are overlaid by donor and gene target. For most donors and targets, the CT values at all three days remain constant, as indicated by the overlaid colored markers in both types of saliva samples. There is a slight sample-to-sample -sample variation. However, the delta CTs are within acceptable values of about one uh, CT difference within the donor and target over the course of the study. The CT values for stabilized saliva are generally lower compared to the raw. Overall, the CT values at day 10 remain below 30 and all targets are detected. So the next slide shows some uh, additional performance data for the stabilized device. Uh, we compared uh, collection compared to uh, another uh, on-market device, device A, in this slide. Fresh, unfrozen saliva samples were collected from 32 donors using both the Specimax Stabilized Kit and Kit A. 
a low and a medium concentration of an activated SARS-CoV-2 was spiked directly into the kits and mixed thoroughly. The saliva samples were then left overnight at room temperature. The nucleic acid was extracted from the samples using applied biosystems MagMax Viral Pathogen 2 nucleic acid isolation kit and the saliva extraction workflow on the Kingfisher Flex. Quantitative PCR was performed using TACMAN reagents to determine CT values for the SARS-CoV-2 N gene and the MS2 extraction control. The graph shows device A in blue and the Specimax stabilized device is indicated by the red dots. Donors numbers 1 through 32 are on the x-axis. The x-axis is divided by SARS viral input with low input on the left and the medium spike input on the right. The y-axis shows CT values for the N gene on the top and the MS2 on the bottom. Across 32 donors collected with the SPECIMAX stabilized kit and device A, little variation was observed in the N-gene target CT after spiking with a medium concentration of an activated SARS-CoV-2. At the lower concentration of an activated virus, the N-gene target indicated that kit A retained less detectable virus than the SPECIMAX stabilized saliva kit. As the saliva specimens varied in consistency and content, uh, some variation in the MS2 CT values was observed. This is expected due to natural donor-to-donor -donor variation. However, the use of kit A did result in higher MS2 CQ values across all samples. The data showed that the SPECIMAX stabilized kit shows better or comparable performance than device A across the donors tested with contrived low viral concentrations when extracted using the MagMax Viral Pathogen 2 kit. Finally, I would like to spend some time on viral inactivation. For our studies, we, we used heat for uh, the SPECIMAX raw collection device, and we also looked at the capabilities of the stabilization solution for viral inactivation in the stabilized version of the device. Additionally, we examined the extraction reagents themselves for their inactivation potential. For the purposes of this discussion, I would like to focus on the SPECIMAX stabilization solution. We performed studies to examine the capability of the SPECIMAX stabilization solution to inactivate several types of viruses, including SARS-CoV-2. We were able to achieve greater than a 4.5 log inactivation of SARS-CoV-2 in our studies. So the left side of this slide shows the viral panel that was selected for inactivation studies. Viruses selected represented varying characteristics that might alter the susceptibility to inactivation, enveloped, non-enveloped, RNA, double-stranded DNA genomes, a segmented genome, et cetera. The viruses were prepared at high titers and exposed to the SPECIMAX stabilization solution or to phosphate-buffered saline as a control condition. The samples were then tested via plaque assay in an appropriate cell line for detectable live virus indicated by plaque formation. Cytopathic effect, or CPE, pr produces plaques on a stained cellular monolayer, monolayer, and titer can be calculated based on plaque count, volume added, and dilution produced to, uh, to calculate a value of plaque-forming units. Three serial passage passages were conducted to confirm no viral particles remained. The representative plaque assay images on the far left show the viruses tested with the SPECIMAX exposed samples on the left side and the PBS controls on the right. As you can see, we did not observe any detectable infectious virus particles in the SPECIMAX exposed samples as indicated by the intact cell lawn. The right half of this slide shows an inactivation experiment conducted using live SARS-CoV-2. For this study, we tested freshly made SPECIMAX stabilization solution as well as a solution that had been aged to approximate about one year of time. We examined a 30-minute exposure time and a 60-minute exposure time. Viral CPE was detected right at or just below the limit of detection of the assay, which is less than or equal to 1.47 times 10 to the 2 TCID 50 per mil. The PBS process controls read between 1.47 times 10 to the 7th and 6.81 times 10 to the 6th TCID 50 per mil. 
The difference was calculated and reported as the level for SARS-CoV-2 in activation, which is greater than 4.5 log 10 TCID 50 per mil by Specimax buffer under all conditions tested in the study. Comparable results were obtained with aged and unaged Specimax buffer. Both exposure times produced greater than a 4 log in activation as determined by the tissue culture infectious dose. A greater than 4 log in activation is considered high based on EMEA recommendations and a guidance statement from Public Health England in 2021 that was specific to SARS-CoV-2 laboratory testing. For more information on these viral inactivation studies conducted with Specimax, please see our webinar that was recorded in November of 2021. With that, I'll close and return control to our moderator. Thank you. Thanks so much, Hannah, for reviewing the Specimax product specifications with viral intactness and inactivation. I'd like to continue this webinar with discussing some costly problems or perhaps some pinpoints or pinch points that customers might experience with high throughput labs and workflows. Specifically, there are costly problems with sample prep. Sample preparation can make up approximately 60% of a lab's given workload. It can, you know, there's a big need for a robust sample prep process that helps uh, reevaluate that workflow and reduce that workload on the uh, on the operators. By increasing reproducibility, this can also help be achieved. With high throughput and automated workflows, we can increase consistency, produce a significant time savings, and also increase productivity in the workload and specifically the workflow, including sample preparation. We can reduce variability between runs. We can have a faster time to answer compared to culturing techniques. And with Thermo Fisher solutions that I'll discuss in the slide following, we can enable high throughput and scalable workflows as well. Thermo Fisher Scientific offers our Kingfisher automation solutions, which enable anywhere from low, medium, to ultra high throughput workflows. Low to medium throughput, we offer our standalone compact bench tops, our Kingfisher Duo Prime system. For medium to high throughput, which can extract 96 to 24 runs per event, we offer our Kingfisher Flex and Apex systems. And for our ultra high throughput, we offer our Kingfisher Presto system, which can be equipped to handle robotic, most robotic or liquid handler systems. The newest of our Kingfisher magnetic processor instruments is our Kingfisher Apex purification system. This system is cloud enabled and has an intuitive touchscreen interface with an optional network connectivity. It offers heating and cooling blocks, as well as a 96, 24, and PCR format within the system. The system enables storage tube elution and elution into small volumes as well. It also has a UV light within the actual system for decontamination between runs. This Kingfisher Apex purification system is a high throughput purification system for mid to high throughput labs, can, be, can have scripts that are easily downloadable from the cloud, um, and it's a very simple workflow navigation to any lab's needs. I would now like to introduce Fan Lu, a staff engineer with Thermo Fisher Scientific with our systems designs team, where he'll be discussing automation advancement for sample transfer, and he'll also be introducing the newest line to our Kingfisher product, the Kingfisher Specitrack sample transfer system. All right, thank you, Lily, for the introduction. My name is Sian. I'm the staff system engineer uh, working for Thermal Fisher Scientific, supporting sample prep. So today's talk is, is about automate, automation advancement for sample transfer, and we're introducing the Specitrax system. So here, we would, we would like to introduce Kingfisher's Bessitrack sample transfer system, which can help you uncap your sample handling potentials. Uh, the Bessitrack system is really an affordable solution to automate <clears throat> decapping, recapping, um, sample tracking, and sample transfer. So the, the system features advanced robotic technologies for increased throughput and efficiency. 
It also features tube to well sample tracking for uh, improved traceability. Um, also, the system can work in a closed system, a closed door uh, environment that will support the increased safety and uh, staff welfare. Um, the, pip, uh, the precise pipetting also helps improve the consistency and uh, reproducibility of the results. As you can see on the image on the right, uh, it's a system that can handle uh, 192 samples from the airtight sample tubes to a 96 deep well plate in 40 minutes. So with that, let's jump into the technical details. Um, here's the inside look of the system. As you can see on the picture on the right, uh, it's all the submodules of the system. As you can see on the front, there's uh, uh, tubes loading on the racks waiting to be processed. And also the system features uh, three main uh, robotic modules. One of them is the robotic arms, uh, which can help pick and place individual tubes uh, to be processed. Also in the back, we can see there's a decapper module, which is in charge of tube uncapping and recapping. While it's doing that, it can also do the barcode scanning to track the uh, tube information. Uh, once the tube is decapped, it can be processed by the do pipetters on the right, uh, which can load multiple types of tips and deliver the samples to a 96 deep well plate output. And also, I would like to mention that the system can work under a closed system um, behind the closed door. Uh, when it's working, it features like a hip hop filtration for safety, and the tips can be ejected into the biohazard waste bins um, below the deck. So the Spacy Track system also features uh, increased consistency and accuracy with sample tracking. Uh, within the system, there's sensors that can automatically uh, scan the barcode on the tubes uh, for tracking within the software. Uh, I can scan both 1D and 2D barcodes. And we have advanced uh, robotic technology to increase the throughput and efficiency while decapping. Uh, while it's decapping and uh, scanning the uh, barcode, the software uh, tracks the sample to well destination uh, in real time, which is really easy uh, view uh, for the user um, and reduce the error and increase consistency. To do that, we only need one technician to initialize the RAM. Here, let's look at some other key system performance with uh, increased consistency and accuracy um, uh, on precision pipetting. So uh, within the system, we have dual pipetters, which can accurately uh, allocate uh, 10 to 1,000 microliters of samples into wells. And also the sample with uh, varying uh, viscosities can be handled uh, with a corresponding aspiration and dispense mode, which can be easily selected in the software. Also, the user tip will be removed and eject below the instrument deck uh, for uh, safety biohazard waste disposal. Also, uh, it's optional for the user to pause the system to remove the waste during the RAM. And also, as you can see on the table on the, uh, on the left, it's showing the uh, precision and accuracy of the system from 10 to 1,000 microliter. Um, Also, let's look at some other key uh, system performance in terms of time saving with uh, Spacy uh, Tracks automation. So in total, we have 85% uh, reduce on processing time compared to manual and also 95% time redu reduction uh, compared to manual. Um, and also, also the sample can be transferred with high precision and accuracy. Uh, we have optimized and preset parameters for various uh, sample times, um, including uh, VTM and saliva. So as you can see on the table on the right, which is detailing the uh, comparison between a manual uh, accessioning and also the Kingfisher Specialty Tracks system, the total setup time for Specialty Tracks is only two minutes, uh, while typically manual is taking longer. And of course, for, if you consider the total sample processing time, it's only 42 minutes for spacey tracks, while it can be as long as 271 minutes for manual. And also worth pointing out is that once 
the system is set up within the two minutes, it's totally walk away time for the user. So there's really no hands-on afterwards uh, comparing to the manual ones. Uh, next, let's talk about the SPECI Mac compatibility on SPECI tracks. So I would like to highlight some uh, test results uh, for the compatibility study conducted both SPECI Max uh, stabilized tubes on SPECI tracks system. So the SPECI Max sta stabilized saliva kit includes the validated barcode labels that's predefined which is really friendly to the SPECI track system, which uh, ensures a really high reliable uh, barcode reading. And also, the, um, as you can see on the right, there's a checkerboard pattern. That's what we use to study the uh, cross-contamination. So the samples was placed on the SPECI track system in, an, in that checkerboard pattern, alternating samples containing and not containing the inactivated uh, SARS-CoV-2 samples. Um, and then we use the system uh, to process uh, the samples, transferring 200 microliter from each specimen uh, to the uh, 96 deep ball plate and the recap each tube. And from our study, we find that there's no well-to-well -well, uh, cross-contamination. Also, uh, uh, we uh, processed, reprocessed those tubes manually afterwards, and we didn't find tube-to-tube contamination, cross-contamination either. So that's all thanks to the working principle of the system that we have um, dual pipetter working at the same time while other samples are closed and we also features HEPA filtration and negative pressure while it's working. Lastly, I wanna talk about the uh, 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 process flexibility with flex uh, tube uh, compatibility. So the SpeciTrax system, as what we saw before, is fully compatible with uh, SPECI-MAX uh, tubes, which includes both stabilized saliva and raw saliva tubes, but it's also compatible with some other tubes. It's an excellent fit on five and 10 mil uh, transport tubes with screw caps. So uh, there's more possibilities down the road. If you have other tubes um, that's not seen here, uh, please contact your sales representative for additional details. So with that, I would like to turn back to Lily. Thank you so much, Fan, for reviewing the detailed specifications and new offerings from the Specitrack system. With that, I'd like to close up this webinar by discussing the full sample to answer solution provided from Thermo Fisher Scientific. With Thermo Fisher Scientific Specimax saliva collection kits, both stabilized and raw, we offer simple non-invasive collection of your viral material for downstream applications. By using the Specitrack sample transfer system, we are able to easily transfer the material from the collection device to the sample plate, which can be processed on a magnetic particle processor, such as our Kingfisher Apex or Kingfisher Flex uh, magnetical particle processing systems with any, any MagMax nucleic acid extraction kit, such as our MVP2 nucleic acid extraction kit. Downstream detection can be processed with real-time PCR systems, such as our applied system, Quant Studio. Here at Thermo Fisher, we offer solutions for whichever lab, uh, for whatever labs are needed. We offer easy uh, options to fully customize the needs of each particular lab. Here's a schematic of how we can utilize one Kingfisher Specitrack system to support a high throughput lab needs with two different Kingfisher Apex or Flex systems and four different PCR detection systems. With that, I'd like to give a big thank you to our sample prep automation and engineering R&D teams from Thermo Fisher Scientific. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about sample prep automation, please do visit our virtual booth. Um, I'd like to thank also the Lab Roots team for allowing us to present here today. At this point in time, if you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so. Uh, just click on the Ask a Question box located at the far left corner of your screen. Let's get started. The first question coming in 
looks like it's for Hannah. What is the collection volume of Specimax? So, um, thanks, Lily. The Specimax saliva collection kit for raw saliva can collect between one and two milliliters of saliva. And the stabilized kit uh, has one mil of stabilization solution and uh, a indicator line for you to collect another milliliter of saliva to be mixed with that stabilized solution or a total of two milliliters of stabilized saliva. Great, thank you so much. I have another question for you. What is the difference between the preservative in Specimax and kit A that you listed in the slide deck? Um, so the stabilization reagent, uh, just looking at what's printed on the um, you know, customer facing documentation for kit A contains reagents that have acute toxicity, skin and eye irritation that can be harmful to the user if inhaled, ingested, or if it comes in contact with your skin or eye. Um, the Specimax stabilization solution um, is a non-hazardous virus inactivating stabilization agent that's compatible with disinfection protocols. Uh, including bleach, and it doesn't contain any um, particularly harmful ingredients. Great, thank you so much. Uh, this next question is for Fan. What, spe what separates Specitrax from other liquid handlers? Thanks, Lily. That's a good question. So the Specitrax Speci sample transfer system is enabled to decap, recap, and the session samples for full work solutions. So with liquid sensitivity, HIPAA filtration, and UV decontamination capabilities, um, the SPECI tracks stand apart from current on-market sample transfer systems, which might only enable liquid handling and robotic. Um, the uh, SPECI track sample transfer system is meant to be compatible for mid to high throughput labs solutions upstream of sample processing. Like Kingfisher magnetic particle processors, such as Kingfisher Flex or APAC system. All right, great. Thank you so much. That is all the time we have for today. I want to thank you guys so much for joining us in today's webinar. Um, we appreciate it. Thank you, LabRoots, and thank you, Thermo Fisher Scientific, for giving us the opportunity to be here today. I want to thank Ms. Saunders, Dr. Liu, and Ms. Manley for their time today and for your important research. And before we go, I want to thank our audience for joining us today as well and for their interesting questions. I'd also like to thank our sponsor, Thermo Fisher Scientific, for sponsoring today's webinar. Questions submitted today or during the on-demand period will be addressed by our speaker via the contact information you provided at the registration. This webcast can be viewed on demand for two years until May 4th, 2024. And LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, take care, everyone. Bye-bye.